being a racist. I actually have this in my notes, and it's an entire lecture I gave as a part of this series. The first racist was Iblis. The first racist was Iblis. Think about it. Because what did Iblis say? I'm better than him because of my origin. It's exactly what racism is, right? I'm better than you because of my ancestry. I'm better than you because of my skin color. This is the essence of racism. So anybody who's a racist has a trait of Iblis in him. Anybody who thinks he's better than somebody else because of his ethnicity, his skin color, his language is a racist. And this racism goes back to none other than Iblis. Iblis is the founder of racism. So if you are following the madhab of racism, then realize that your founder of this madhab is none other than Iblis himself. And how do we counter this? Education. There's no other way to counter bigotry and racism other than education. Giving khutbas and durus, humanizing the other, being very frank and blunt about these issues. And realize that, and subhanAllah, it's so sad, wallahi brothers and sisters, that racism and nationalism, this is well known, was an imperialistic tool that the British and the French and the Italians and every single colonizer literally imposed upon us. We had no notion of nationality and racism until the British and others came and they told us, you are this, you are that. This is well known. Anybody who reads history and colonialism and what happened, this is something that is not a conspiracy theory. When the British told the Arabs of, of the uh, Arabian Peninsula, fight against the Turks, right? They were the ones who started saying, you're Arabs. How could the Turks rule over you? That notion never came to them. Look at Lawrence of Arabia. Listen to my lecture, 1914, in the, in the Making of the Model East. Listen to that lecture. I have another lecture about this. They were the ones who started nationalism. You're Arabs. You deserve your own independent you know, principality. Why should you be under the, the, the Turks, even though the Turks were Muslim? And that notion of we don't like the Turks because they're Turks was not a part of the vernacular. There were complaints about the Ottoman Empire, taxes, this and that. But it wasn't like, oh, they're Turks and we're Arabs. This is racism. Right? And who was the one who instigated this? Lawrence of Arabia and others of this nature. And the same thing, and honestly, now look, guys, I am you know, Pakistani in terms of heritage. Right? It is ludicrous. I say this as a Pakistani heritage. I was born here. It is ludicrous for a Pakistani to say, I am Pakistani first and Muslim second. SubhanAllah. Pakistan didn't exist when your father was, was alive. Some of you were, uh, were born and Pakistan was not even uh, around. And you're going to give your allegiance to a piece of land that doesn't even exist in terms of except in imagination? Where are the boundaries? Who derived the boundaries of these countries? The British did. This land that you call Pakistan or America, it is not a living entity that will bestow grace upon you. It's a figment of collective imagination. These lines that we draw on maps, they don't really exist in the world. They do not exist in the real world. These lines keep on moving back and forth. Anybody who studies history, Wallah, you cannot be nationalist if you're, Wallah, I'm saying very blunt here, if you're intelligent. Because nationalism is very foolish. What is it? It's a figment of imagination. Nothing actually exists called a country other than the imagination of the people who want to live in this country. It's a border that has been invented by minds, not in real life, right? You cross the border from Canada to America, the same supermarkets, the same stores, the same trees, the same air. Where, where is this boundary? We have made an invisible boundary. And it is well known when the colonizers left us, they were the ones who said divide and conquer. It's a well-known tactic, divide and conquer. More than 60 Muslim-majority countries when there were, used to be one ummah. More than 60 countries. So the Pakistani is irritated with the Bengali, the Bengali is irritated with the Pakistani, and they were even one country up until 1972. Yani, most of you are alive when this has happened. Yet there is fuel there. This is Bengali, this is Pakistani, they did this, they did that. You're both Muslims. La ilaha illallah is more powerful than the differences here. Look at the Arab world as well. I don't want to be just you know, talking about my own race as well. Look at the Arab world as well. Where did these boundaries come from? Listen to my lecture, 1914, the creation of the modern Middle East. A Frenchman and a Britishman, Sykes-Picot. 
These are the names of the two people, Sykes Pico. They literally sat down on a table, the map of the Middle East, and they argued over Iraq here, Syria here, Lebanon here, Jordan here. And they're arguing, going back and forth about where the line is going to be drawn. The lines that they drew in 1914 are the lines that are currently the borders. What is an Iraqi versus a, a Palestinian versus an Urduni? Jordan and, and Lebanon did not even exist until, again, less than 80 years ago. What is Lebanon and, and Jordan and Palestine? These are, they were provinces of the larger Arab or the larger Ottoman lands. They were never an independent country. The language is the same. The culture is the same. The cuisine is the same. Again, these are imaginary lines. So to have this type of false pride over my ethnic heritage, look, guys, I'm wearing a kurta. I just had biryani for lunch, mashallah, tabarakallah. I love my heritage. I really do, right? Urdu bi baat karte, mashallah. And I like the fact that I can speak Urdu. But these are temporary matters. How long is Urdu going to last? How long is Pakistan going to last? Is it eternal? Is it al hayy al qayyum? Honestly, what country has lasted for more than 500, 1,000 years? Think about it. What country? Where, which country has lasted for even 800 years? Not Where? Every country rises and falls, comes and goes. How can your allegiance be to an imaginary country? What do you mean? My, my loyalty is to this country. What is just words? So let's not you know, confuse a generic pride of heritage and culture and clothing and cuisine. Alhamdulillah, that's fine. Versus a pride that trumps Islam. 